Hello there, it's Keith here and this is a lesson to the Hello World series. We look at a different 6809 system each week and we look at how to get a simple Hello World running and then we extend that Hello World to show um, monitor settings, the um, status of the registers and also the memory. And this is designed to be your starting point for building a program of your own on these systems. Now the FM7 is a bit tricky uh, because a lot of the documentation is Japanese but fortunately I can read Japanese a little bit. So um, we just about managed it and um, today we're going to be looking at how you can compile a program for the FM7 and um, attach it to a disk and then run it on the FM7. Now I think the FM7 is really an interesting system. It's very popular out here and I think it was possibly one of the most popular um, 6809 systems. The Dragon certainly had a, a following in the UK and the Tandy Coco but the, I think the FM7 was possibly bigger and in my personal opinion it's more powerful. It's got two 6809 processors and it's got um, eight color graphics. It's 640 by 200 for some strange reason but I think it's a really interesting um, system to look at if you're if you want some 6809 and you don't want to go for the vectors of the Vectrex I think this is a in really interesting system that's worth looking at but the Japanese does cause a little bit of trouble because I've had to read a lot of Japanese documents to get anything working on it anyway though um, I'll be giving you loads of English documentation so hopefully if this is something that might interest you you'll be able to have a look at it anyway we'll go over to today's example and we'll see it running and then we'll discuss how we got it going Okay, if I just compile this here, build FM7 here. So this is XM7, this is my emulator, and you can see Hello World on the screen here. Okay, so let's go over the file here and let's discuss each of the sections. Now, generally speaking, I try to not use the firmware in any way to get graphics onto the screen in these examples. This time I'm breaking my own rule and I'm using the basic ROM to print the characters. Now why am I doing this? Well firstly it's easy and it works but secondly the graphics hardware is actually on a second CPU between the main one. The main one's running our code and the, the main CPU tells the second CPU hey do some work for me like print a character and the second CPU does it. The main CPU can't get to the graphics RAM at all, so whatever I do, I'm going to have to use some kind of uh, intermediary to get to the graphics RAM. So I figured in this case, there's no real negative to doing this, not for the purpose of today's example. And it's so easy, I thought we'd, we'd, we'd sort of um, allow ourselves to use the basic ROM a little bit and get us out of this hole, because otherwise I'd be explaining about two pages of uh, um, programming for the graphics and the sub-CPU. And we're going to do that later, don't worry about it. So um, anyway, so yeah, we're cheating a little bit there, but let me off. Now, the file format we're creating here is known as a 2BO. This is a binary file, and it's got to be in this format to attach to the disk, otherwise it's not going to run. Now, the format, um, I would suggest you leave all of this the same, but if you want to change it, I'll explain it briefly. Our program is being loaded and executed at memory address 2000, and the header is 21 bytes here. First, we have the file name, and the file name for today's example is prog. So that's there. Now this is now the format definition and this has got to be fixed as is this. You, you don't want to change these otherwise your program won't build. You've then got a size. We're calculating this from these labels here. We've got a program start and we've got a program end here and these calculating the length. And then we've got the load address here which is the start of the code which is of course memory address 2000. Now at the end of the file as well there is a footer ff0 0, 0 the address of the start, which is the execution address, but it doesn't work. I couldn't get it working. The way I'm loading is different. We'll discuss how I'm loading, but um, the execution address, is, although I've put it in, it doesn't actually execute. Don't know what that's about, but anyway. And then um, an end of file data here, 1A here. So that's the footer and that's the header. And as long as this is all correct, our program will run. If, I, if it's not correct, uh, we're gonna get some kind of nasty error. For example, if I take this byte out here, Oh knows. So yeah, you, you gotta you gotta make sure the file format's correct. And that is a valid header and I had to faff around it. I find some tools online that would build files that didn't quite work very easily. Um, and then I had to reverse engineer the file format a little bit, but that, that's the valid header. You'll notice we've got this padding off command here. This tells my assembler not to um, as align things to words, otherwise it would be start adding zeros to lines. So that's a pain, so I turn that off. Um, if you need things word aligned, you're gonna have to align them yourself, that means. As I said before, we're using print char from the basic ROM. That's the address of the print coach routine in basic. So that's what we're using here. Now we're extending print char to be a print string routine. Now my tutorials always use 255 terminated strings. I know people might not like that, but I don't really care. That's what I've used so far in all my tutorials. And being as I've covered about 20 
five odd systems I'm not changing now so if you don't like it you can change it but if you follow my tutorials you're going to be seeing 255 termination I'm afraid anyway we're showing a hello world message to the screen here we're showing it one character at a time which load in from Y and if it's not 255 we print to the screen now all of the characters are being processed by this sub CPU and that means we can send all kinds of crazy control characters like an up character and move the cursor up the screen and clear screen characters and all kinds of crazy things. Um, here though for new line we're just sending character 13, character 10, very classic and that will be processed. I think basically the um, sub CPU is treating it as a terminal emulation. Um, there's even color commands and all kinds of crazy things but um, we're not going to cover those at this stage and we're going to go later on and look at all the hardware tricks we can do in a different lesson. So that's our new line command, just printing two characters. And that's really all there is to this example because thanks to that basic ROM doing the character printing for us. So that's our valid file. And let's see how we assemble that. Well, I use Mac OAS, which is called ASW.exe. And that's what I build all of my um, 6809 tutorials with. Build file in this batch file is the source file. So you, we, that will be the uh, hello world.asm or whatever you've got. 6809 CPU, we need to specify that because Mac OS uses lots of different CPUs. We are putting a listing file. This is a handy debugging tool. It um, takes the um, contents of the ASM file and it shows the binary bytes that are created as a result of that for each line of your program. And if things are getting weird, which sometimes they do, you might find that very handy. I had a problem with um, a non-zero direct page um, on the Vectrex yesterday and it wasn't compiling right. It turned out that I was misunderstanding how the assembler would compile the code and that's why it wasn't working. And it was thanks to that listing file. But if you're getting started and you can't figure out how to get your assembler to output a listing file, you don't need it because if you're not willing to read a massive listing file and understand what you're seeing, it's possibly not going to help you, but definitely worth considering if you can get it. Here I'm defining a symbol, build FM7. My multi-platform code has different modules that turn on and off for different systems. That's, uh, that's how I can have a graphics routine that works on all the systems. And here we're just outputting the specified file, build prog.build. Now this isn't ready to go on the disk yet. It's an intermediary file format that we need to convert. Now, if everything goes okay there, we're then gonna convert that to raw binary with p2bin. Here's our source file and here's our destination. And I'm just specifying to pad with zeros, but you don't actually need that. You could take that out, it still seems to work fine. Okay, now I've got a template disk ready for our work today. So I'm copying that template disk and I'm using that as our boot disk here. And then I'm using a program called FMWrite from FTools, which I didn't write. I can't take credit for that. There's a link to it on my website, though, if you want to see the original Japanese website. And um, we're basically adding prog.2bo to the startup disk here. That's the startup disk that we copied it here. We're then using an emulator called XM7, and we're mounting that startup disk. Okay. Now, XM7, the version I'm using is Japanese. There may be English versions, but I've decided to use the Japanese one because I wanted to have the latest. Now, one thing you do have to make sure is you've got basic selected here, because if you select DOS and if you reset, where's the reset? Well, now it won't start up right. So that, that's something that you might catch you out if your emulator has got messed up. But, um, But uh, as I say, um, as long as your emulator is set up right and you can download my tutorial um, build scripts that come with the emulator, hopefully pre-configured. So you can um, just run this without worrying about the Japanese. As I say, maybe there's an English version out there, but um, I'm using the, the native language one here because I can just about manage it. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to disable the line that adds that file to the startup disk. If I can remember what the rem command is for a batch file possibly can't. Now why am I doing this? Well I want to show you what the disk is set up like. So as I say oh. so as I say I've got this template disk that I copy every time as, as a sort of starting point and you can see it has a file called startup and this automatically loads when the disk is inserted you see. And this, this is what I try and do on all of my systems, get the emulator running the program as fast as possible. So get the emulator to start up with the disk or cartridge, get the disk or cartridge to boot the program as quickly as possible so you can debug as quickly as possible. So here we've got load m prog, and then we've got x exec at hexadecimal 2000, which is the executing the program itself. Now the program is loading at its specified address, which um, we specify, of course, effectively here. 
that exec address didn't work, did it? Uh, I don't know why. Um, and maybe there's a way, but I don't know it, and this works. So that's what we're doing. But the point I'm making is if you were changing your code to load into a different address, you know, maybe you were trying to squeeze a little bit more memory out of the system, or maybe you were moving further down for some reason, well, you're going to need to change that, batch, that um, startup script as well. But that's what we're doing here, as I say. And that startup template I'm keeping as an unchanged disk and I'm copying it every time. I don't want the disk to get full of deleted files or corrupt or something. So that's the safe way of doing things. You start from a, a known position every time your emulator starts. And that's what we need to get things working as quickly as possible. Now, that was the basic example. We do have a more advanced example. Once I've got the new line command and the print char routine working OK on the system, I can then include my monitor file here. Now, this is too complex to go into the workings of the monitor file, but we will uh, discuss the result of it. The monitor command will show all of the system registers, and the memdump command will output an area of memory to the screen. If I run this here, you'll see. Here's all our registers here. The D is the AB combination, X and Y, direct page, the flags here, and so on. And then here we've got a dump of the memory. And I've dumped the vectors because I wanted to see what the default vectors for the system was. Now, here's the reset vector, for example. That's what the system runs on reboot. And um, the, there's a bunch of other ones. And the one I was interested in was the IRQ vector because I was writing a keyboard reading routine, which we'll look at later on. But if I wanted a different address, um, as long as I'm careful, I don't accidentally output a bunch of hardware registers, which could cause all kinds of funky um, effects. But if I output a different memory address, you can see that's output to the screen as well. So hopefully these will help you out if you're getting started and you're learning things and you need to you know, read in from a hardware register and see it to the screen quickly, the monitor, or you want to see what, um, what's actually going on with the, um, the variables used by BASIC or something with a mem dump, or then maybe your loop's failing and you don't know why and you need to check if X is getting messed up by something. But those are really handy, I think, for getting started and trying to work, in, work out what's going on with the system. And by using a software monitor in all of my tutorials, um, it means that I don't need to worry about how the emulator works and what the functions of the emulator are. I'm used to um, just relying on what I can write myself. And I think that's a beneficial way. Sometimes it's a disadvantage. And some, sometimes if the um, em emulator does have really good debugging tools, you want to use them as well. But I, I find relying on what I can build myself to be a nice way of doing things anyway. That's all we'll be covering today. Um, you can go to my website. You can download the build scripts. I've included the, um, uh, the tools for building the disk. And um, hopefully, you'll be able to get started with today's Hello World, which, of course, you can also download. Now, um, as I say, we're going to be covering the, um, this system a lot more in the future. We've got, I've got a lot of more FM7 tutorials coming because I find it a fascinating system. So if you're interested in this system, hopefully you'll um, follow along and you'll see that. But whatever you do, I hope you enjoy your 6809 programming and the FM7. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.